Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to the Deep Roots Movement. My name is Ilyasin. Today we are exploring Ephesus area in Western Turkey, specifically in the town of Seljuk or Selçuk. This is the Seven Sleepers site, one of three Al-Kaf locations here in, in the Republic of Turkey. Within the grounds of, of, of the Seven Sleepers site at the grotto, we have three possible locations for, for the historic cave site. And we can, we can revisit whether it's, uh, you know, the, the, the issue of historicity at another time. But for the time being, this is the second location. This is a very interesting place. It's, a, it's almost like a natural bridge. Um, it's a giant grotto that, that clearly, like a huge section of the back wall has collapsed in likely from some kind of an earthquake and erosion type activity. So many giant boulders through here. So at one time, it could be that these came from the top above. It could also be that the wall went up much higher. Um, I could see at least one third of the way up, maybe halfway up, and there could have been a large window where, um, where sunlight could have entered in from the top. Um, if you look over here, to my left, you'll notice a lot of um, a lot of water activity here. You know, um, as you know, stalagmites, um, you know, cave formations have formed along the wall as water dripped down. And these are these are quite large. And then it looks like maybe we had. Uh, I mean, well, so you got stalactites hanging down, and then it looks like perhaps a stalagmite beginning from the bottom in a couple different places. These are very interesting formations. Now they're they're covered with. Uh, deposits, dark deposits, so it's hard to see the beauty of them except for the textures. Um, so this is a very, very old place. Um, and it's very open in the middle. It looks like locals come here and, and, and have had campfires in the past. Um, people have slept in here, very obviously. In the other cave, you can see an old decayed mattress. Um, this is a lovely place. I've prayed here before. Um, it's a lovely place to pray. It's got a, a really nice energy. If you go up top, it's full of thorn bushes, so you're going you're gonna to get ripped up a bit. Um, there's a beautiful flowering tree, but uh, a little bit further up, but it's out of the camera's view. Um, so in a moment, I, I will read um, a couple different translations of the section of Surat al-Kaf in English, of course, um, inshallah. So this is a very interesting place. And Surat al-Kaf is one of my very favorite sections of the Quran. So when I found out that there was at least one location here in Turkey, I was very curious to come and see it. I grew up with Christianity in, in, with, within a different, um, how can I put it? I grew up with a, in, in, a, in an apocalyptic kind of Christianity, a, a break off from the Protestant tradition. And so I had never heard the story of the, of the sleepers until I started reading different translations of the Quran. Um, I'm not even sure that most Roman Catholics are familiar with the Seven Sleepers. I could be wrong. You know, uh, please mention in the comments if you had grown up with that story. I know many Eastern Christians did, and so it was it was widely known in the in the first few centuries of Christianity and beyond. Um, but this is a very fascinating place to me, and so you know, with some of the brothers, we were just trying. We were reading through the through the surah and trying to see possible connections to a literal. Um, historic location for the story. Is it just an allegory? Does it have literal historical significance? And regardless, what are the underlying lessons, the, the lessons that we can uh, apply in a practical, pragmatic way, what, you know, to help problem solve through issues related to the eschaton, because Surat al-Kaf is very much related to the end times. You know, we're, we're actually encouraged by our Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to read it um, you know, on, on Fridays, we are encouraged to memorize the first 10 ayat and the last 10 or the entirety, if, if at all possible. And from my perspective, it holds a great deal of symbolic and, and literal value for, the, for a believer's everyday life, especially related to the times we're in. Just as a quick example, um, in there it talks about when the seven sleepers, when, when the sleepers awaken, you know, one of them is sent into town 
and he's told to be very mindful, very careful as he goes into town. And he, he takes a silver coin, so it, it indicates um, something about money in the end times. The importance of and, and, and the extending value of, of, of silver, perhaps gold by extension. Um, you know, pure and ethical money, it also discusses pure and ethical food. And I see these as very much literally true in our time. You know, that, that we need to really focus on pure and ethical food, pure and ethical money. So these are some deeper lessons. And, and the whole book, you know, the, the whole section of al Kaf is almost like a standalone book within the Quran. I mean, it's obviously, it's, it's a chapter, but it, it would, it's, it's very similar to a book with different, different sub-chapters within it. And they have many lessons and all in my mind are related to the awakening process. How do we wake up and become a mature human being in these times, in this day, in this age? So in a moment, inshallah, uh, we're going to go to a different location here and I will, I will read from Surat al-Kaf a couple different translations in order to understand, in order, so we can think about this location a little bit more together, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum.